Hi, I'm Brian Jackson, editor of itbusiness.ca, and today by Nicole Arbor at YouTube. Now, welcome, Nicole. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's great to see you here in person, and I'm not just watching you on YouTube. You're actually talking back to me, so that's pretty cool. That's awesome. It's like it's real life, but through the internet. <laughs> If you can start off by just telling us how you got involved in making YouTube videos in the first place. Sure. Um, well, years ago, I was making branded content for companies like Molson Canadian or Virgin Mobile. just came to me because I was a comedian. They wanted to do something really funny. And we said, hey, let's do a video that will hopefully go viral. That one with uh, Virgin ended up getting a million views. And I went, you know, I like this business. This is a lot of fun. It's more fun than doing stand-up for a couple hundred people or even a couple thousand. You can reach way more people in the same amount of time. So I started doing these videos by myself. And then about last October, I was headhunted by the MCN CDS Collective Digital out of LA, who said, hey, we think you're supposed to be a YouTuber. And then... I just started YouTubing officially in January as well as producing content for other YouTubers as well as brands and it's just been amazing and I love it. Okay, great. Well, you were recently on a panel with Google talking to businesses about how to use YouTube for your business. Now, uh, tell us a bit about what you do for yourself and what you do with your YouTube channel. How do you use it? My YouTube channel, I use my YouTube as kind of the throw things at the wall and see what sticks board that I can then use that knowledge and send it out to the brands and other YouTubers I work with. Because for me, I can just try anything once, I could try anything twice, and then I see what works for me and use, a, use that for other people. So for example, more produced videos I do, something like my music video Bang Bang has, uh, I think it's almost at 400,000 views right now. That was a bigger production and that worked really, really well. However, sometimes you want to kick yourself because sitting in front of a camera just like this will get 100,000 views and you're just talking about a topic, which is actually really cool because it opens it to businesses of every size to utilize YouTube no matter what their budget is. There's a way to get your message out there. So that's kind of what I do now. I do the history of um, on Tuesdays. It's at home right now where I give you the history of a topic in a funny way. On Mondays, I do Music Mondays. I'm vlogging in between and have a bunch of really big, over-the-top produced productions coming up. Yeah, and I noticed that you like to produce series. Yeah, on I do. So I'm wondering if you can tell me about making these series. And do you find that you get repeat viewers by doing that? I do find that I get repeat viewers, and it's actually something I would really encourage businesses to do. Like I said, I use my YouTube channel almost as an experiment, and the history of, they're coming back for more and for more. So history of already has hundreds of thousands of views on it, and I've only done a few episodes. So it's something I'm going to continue to do, and it's great because I can insert any kind of brands, any kind of you know, collaborations in that format. So this week, later on, I'm actually going to a film premiere for a new gymnastics movie, and with the stars of that film, we're doing the history of gymnastics, and they're going to jump in that video with me. So it's really cool to have different series that you can incorporate brands, other YouTubers, celebrities, and different things into it. Yeah, and when you were, uh, when you're shooting your um, videos, I noticed that you don't just talk to to explain your editing technique. Why do you package your videos <laughs> with lots of short clips? I find it funnier. I think um, I come from stand-up comedy again. That's my background. So for us, it's set up, punch, set up, punch. Uh, some people that are vlogging or doing different things, they might do longer because they're not getting to a punchline. But for me, I like to hit that point punch, hit that point, make it funny, and it resets people's brain. It's actually an editing technique that when you're doing a jump cut or consistently moving around like that, you're consistently resetting people's brains. It's actually a technique that was utilized first by MTV in the U.S. with their quick jump cut film, you know, the way that they edited stuff like yeah. that. So if it's a static shot, people actually get a little bit bored, uh, not on purpose, but their brain just gets a little bored, and if you're resetting them, it makes them refocus and stay engaged for the entire length of the video. Okay, great tip. Yeah, so, you didn't think there'd be science in there, did you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, science, that's right. Uh, so, it, it, I mean, these are the experiments that you have to do on YouTube to really find... Another technique that I really like of yours 
is always having the right thumbnail in place. Um, usually uh, it's a picture of you, title of your video. You come up with your strategy around thumbnails. I have had actually someone very smart teach me about thumbnails. Another very large YouTuber uh, named Matthew Santoro gave me his tips and tricks on thumbnails um, as well as some other people so basically it has to show what's in your video a couple years ago people were just trying to put whatever a pretty girl or whatever they think will be clickbait for people but YouTube actually has I believe built it into their algorithms that you'll be penalized for doing that now and now I know you just have to advertise what's in your video so if I'm doing the history of green beer it's going to be me in the green and we're going to have the beer and it's pretty easy to see what it is and I find that thumbnails that work a little bit better are ones where you're happy or expressive long far away shots aren't going to do it for you if I'm back like this it's not going to work as much as if I'm up here so you want to see who's in your video a clear photo um, there's a debate whether you should have words on it or not I like words some people don't but uh, that's how I make my thumbnails uh, as you say you're a comedian now, is that the type of content that works well on YouTube, or is it just the type of content that works well for you? That type of content works well for me. However, I like coming from the advertising side, too, where I've worked with a lot of brands, a lot of agencies, anything that's going to touch on those emotions, this, you know, advertising 101, anything that's going to pull on people's heartstrings, that's going to make you feel, that's going to make you laugh or cry, something with an emotional attachment, I find works the absolute best. So you can teach people stuff, but are you going to make them feel something during it? That's what's going to keep them there. You can show them your brand new product, but you have to attach a fun emotion to it. Um, whether it's, you know, oh, it reminds you of family, or this reminds you of a great time in college, or this just made you laugh. Tie an emotion to your videos, and you'll have higher views. Okay, and you bring up that you've worked with uh, brands and agencies in the past on YouTube, and I wonder if you can share some of those examples. Sure. Um, so something I did with Molson years ago was the Molson Canadian Guy Code. We went right across Canada, and I interviewed tons and tons of guys and a couple girls as well just about the unwritten codes of dudes, which is funny because I'm clearly not a dude, obviously. Um, and it was fun because what we did was let the audience be the stars of the videos. So I kind of gave them all the setups and let them take the punchlines. So when they were watching them after, and that campaign ended up getting 9 million views, um, it was all people logging in at first to see themselves. We set them up to look hilarious and be really funny. And because the content was actually authentic and really funny, and we were at music festivals in different places, it got a ton of views because it was a really fun experience for people. And then something like with Virgin Mobile, who was always a freaking treat to work with because they're willing to push the envelope and go crazy with it. Some people aren't. Uh, the first Slutty Claws video I did with them was the Virgin Mobile Holiday Greeting, where they just wanted to do something freaking cool for their Christmas card instead of Happy Holidays from Virgin Mobile. So it, we worked together on putting together something that I was Mrs. Claus, uh, AKA Slutty Claus. <laughs> and it was kind of Mrs. Claus is the desperate housewife in the North Pole. How would that go? And then slap Virgin Mobile on that fun time that you had. And that ended up getting uh, a million views on YouTube. And then I reposted it uh, a little bit after on my YouTube, but it was a, a great experience. And because the brand was willing to make something that was cool content first versus just making an ad, it was really successful for them. What do you think made that video so well watched? Me. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just teasing you. Um, I think it was that it was funny. It was just, it was funny. It was a different thing to do. It was irreverent. I was taking shots. I remember being on set and saying, uh, guys, I have some ideas. Just pass me that bottle of Jack Daniels. And, you know, we just switched the cuts and she was taking shots in between each line now. And we just built on it. So it was fun. There was a, a bit of this definitely happened on the fly. You can almost tell there was some improv in it. I almost laughed a few times. So I think people identify with just nonsense, irreverence, funny, and overall it was just funny. So this year, actually, at Christmas, I revised that character of Slutty Claus and did Slutty Claus 2, and uh, that, that one's done pretty well, too. So we did an extended version of what she's like in the North Pole this year. Well, it sounds like you were really dedicated to staying in character during these shoots. Yes, the, the alcohol is for the character. <laughs> Should you always go back and um, try and do a sequel 
when you see that a video is successful? I think you should. I actually think you should. I think that that's when you should turn something maybe into a series. Uh, Slutty Claws as a character probably isn't a series-worthy thing at the moment. Who knows in the future? Sounds like a fun movie to me. But I really do think that if something works, kind of like the old Spice guy, who's the only one who has beat me in Canada right now, um, it worked the first time, so they went back. And you can just keep writing around characters or premises that work really well. I think that's an awesome way to actually create content is find a series and keep on going with it. And uh, when you work with brands like Molson Canadian and uh, Virgin, you are talking about all these views that they get to their videos, but beyond just um, getting that attention to their brand, what are brands looking to accomplish on YouTube? Oh, I would say they all have different goals. So if it's a new product launch, it might just be brand awareness. So they might just want influencers to be showcasing to the world that they have this awesome new product. It might be an experience to link, hey, this is a life thing that's going to happen to everyone, a graduation, the buying the new car, buying a house, that experience you want to be having with us. So you show a version of that experience that you're going to want to recreate as a consumer. Um, or there's just, hey, you had a great time laughing with us. So hopefully in the future, when it's time to buy a product in our category, you're going to buy ours because we made you have a great time. So there's different, um, obviously, different goals that different companies have and different brands have. And it's just about sitting down with, let's say, the YouTuber or content creator or the production company, figuring out what your goals are, and then going from there. And can you think of a time that you worked with a brand where they really were happy with what they accomplished on YouTube? Maybe they, they shared that with you? I have uh, friends over at Benzagel. So it's a skincare line uh, originally aimed at teens, but they're a little bit more broad now. And we just did, we were doing blogs before, and I was like, guys, let's just, let's just do a quick little video uh, on a smaller scale than something I've done for, say, a Virgin or a Nike or Axe. And we just did a blog, uh, sorry, a vlog. They sponsored one of my vlogs, and they were super happy with it because it hit their target for what they wanted. Uh, there was a ton of interaction, lots of comments on it, and it was just one of my vlogs. So it, there's a different way for every kind of company of every size to integrate with YouTube and be happy. It just has to depend on what their goals is, what their goals is, what their goals are, and I think you can just go for it. And you can always find the right YouTuber or the right production company or the right people to team with, no matter what size you are, to find something that's going to work and you're going to be happy with. Right. And do, is that your recommendation for brands, is to work with a, a YouTube person established? 100%. <laughs> I am... Uh, it's funny because I'm coming from traditional media and I have three TV shows out right now that I love and I'm super proud of, but team internet is where it's at. Some people say it's you know, people call it new media. It's not. It's now media. And if you're not on board right now with the YouTube community and YouTubers and utilizing this awesome group who are amazing with talking to their fans in a really authentic way, which is how you want your company to be connecting with your consumer, then you're just not doing it right. So yes, talk to YouTubers. Get on board with YouTubers. I'm 100% team internet, and I think it is the only way to be doing it right now. Uh, how do you approach a YouTube star? Is it directly or through an agency? Um, there's different ways to do that. So there are MCNs, so they're the managing networks. So there's people like Collective Digital. Um, I know that there's a couple new ones in Canada that have opened up. Or you can just email them directly. If you see a YouTuber that you like, then you can just you know message that little message button on YouTube and approach them directly if there's a manager they need to speak with will direct you over there. Or you can approach an MCN and say, hey, I have this budget, this is my target demographic, and they'll be able to hook you up with a bunch of different channels you can check out and figure out who's the best fit for you. Where can people find you on the internet? Right here, right now. No, I'm just kidding. Um, they can find me on my YouTube channel. So it's youtube.com backslash Nicole Arbor. I also have a website. It's NicoleArbor.com. And you can reach me through that website if you need any help with uh, figuring out social media stuff. I also do a lot of social media consulting and consulting with YouTubing and making cool company brands and cool branded content around there. As well on Twitter, I'm at Nicole Arbor. And on Instagram, I'll be Nicole Arbor. <laughs> A little gangster there.